Hi folks, um, I'm here with some other folks from Arm to talk about the state of the Arm ports in Debian. Um, this is, as I've said, is very much a boff. I'm not planning on talking all the way through. Please interrupt if you have questions. Um, there'll be plenty of chance to discuss things. Um, let's go. So. I want to talk about briefly about the existing Deb uh, ARM ports in Debian, uh, the buildies, the hardware. ARM64 is the shiny new port which is currently um, building. Um, we have other new stuff coming. Somebody please take notes in Gobby, it makes life a lot easier. Um, I will, as with all of my boffs and talks, I will make sure that I send out a full set of notes to the appropriate lists later. So. Without further ado, OMEL is the oldest of the, the current ARM ports. Um, we first released it with Lenny a very long time ago. Um, it's not the first port ARM port we had in Debian, but the even older ones have gone away, and frankly, we don't miss them. Um, OMEL targets um, significantly older ARM processors than you will tend to see on the market today. There are some that still um, are a better fit for OMEL than, than anything newer, but they're quite minority interest as far as the general purpose computers go these days. Um, so we target the soft float um, EABI for V4T on processors. The T means it has thumb. Um, some of our older hardware still wants this. Um, it's still all supported upstream, but in kernel, in toolchain, in a whole range of different places. But that support is starting to go away. Um, various projects, when you say that you support still support V4T, will point and laugh and say, or will ask the question, why? So. Oh, absolutely. You can you can still buy V4 devices to this day. Yes. That's sad, but okay. Sure. Well, as I said, for, for, oh, they're very cheap. I mean, to this day, the ARM the 7 TDMI is still possibly ARM's biggest selling by actual numbers. Um, processor um, and and you know this works on it. It's just not all that useful for most people who want want something more these days. And we don't have kernel support for it apparently. Um, so a whole, there's a whole bunch of people are moving away. I mean, we, we do have a, a lot of very interested people in Debian and elsewhere who are continuing to support this, but there's going to be a point where we can't. Um, and most of most other distros, in fact, don't even bother with anything before V7 with any real support. V5 is as far back as most people go. So I will say this is, the discussion is forever ongoing as to whether or not RMEL is still worth it. For all of those people with all of the, the various plug machines and lots of the NAS boxes that are all based on V5, um, I don't, I'm not proposing that we dump those people at all, um, but at some point we may move forward from V4T to V5. I'm forever being, being pushed, pushed by, say, the ARM toolchain people to ask, oh my god, Woo. To ask, say, hello, Colin. <laughs> to be, you know, to ask, why are we still doing this? Um, they would like us to move forwards, but whenever we ask, can you give us a real reason why? Um, there actually isn't that much difference between V4 T and V5 in the instruction set. It's so anyway. That's a heads up. Oh, mate, Jeff is the, is the other existing ARM port that we that we've ha we had more than two weeks ago. Um, we first released that with Wheezy. This is for the much more recent. Has the mic gone away? Should still be there. Uh, got it? Okay, it's there. But I guess somebody's turned it down. Oh. Um. Am I okay on the stream? Yeah, it's definitely there. Um, so, OMHF is the is the more up to date 
um, on board. Again, it's EABI, but specifically it's the hard float variant targeting on V7 with VFP V3 D16. Um, I won't bother explaining that unless people really want me to. Just suffice to say, it's current hardware that is in all, that is basically in your Android phone and is is on almost all of the V7 devices that are shipping today. Um, it's the standard that all of the ARM Linux distros basically agreed on a couple of years ago, and then most of them stuck to. Um, don't get me started. I, I could I could rant all day, and I don't want to. I'm, I'm a nice person. <laughs> Um, with the latest uh, move over to the ARM uh, multi-platform kernel and using DTBs, the nice thing is we no longer need to have three, four, half a dozen or a hundred different kernels to be able to support all of these devices. Not all of the supported devices yet have all of, the, all of their onboard peripherals and whatever supported through uh, device tree, but at this point, you know, like no new platforms are going in without, without device tree effort, and anyone who, who hasn't shifted to device tree yet for ARM really, really needs slapping, unless you've got good reasons. I don't know, I don't pretend to know all of this. The nice thing is with this that we don't necessarily have to to go out and test on every single device. In theory, a well-supported upstream kernel port should just work with a mainline kernel and it should just work in Debian. We've got a potentially massive set of supported devices. So, build these in hardware. The picture, though, is a bit small, I'm afraid. We are mostly still relying on uh, dev boards for building um, ARMEL and ARMIT-JEF. Um, we did have some older machines, but the current stuff is we, uh, Marvell were very, very nice to us and donated a set of eight Armada XP uh, machines not that long ago. Um, those are uh, quad core, they have um, four gigs of RAM on board, they have on board SATA, four lots of giggy. Um, these are really, really nice machines, and whereas on the older IMX 53s we had, it could take several days, we had a, a little mini rack full of these and we were still not very fast. Each one of these Armada XPs is basically about <coughs> as fast as maybe five of the old machines. Um, and this is why it's, we are really are screaming ahead. The older V5 buildies that we were using for Army L, in fact, were also Marvell donated dev boards, but they were so old um, that actually they promised us they would, they would donate the new machines if we promised to turn the old ones off. <laughs> we were the, approximately the only people on the planet who were still using the kernel support for, the old, uh, for those old machines, and they didn't want to have to maintain them anymore. So here, have new machines. It, it, it's nice. It, it's good of them. Um, we can now drop the kernel flavor, absolutely. Yes. Um, there were some bits and pieces, there were some teething troubles with these machines. Like a lot of, of experience that we have on the more embedded uh, platforms that we do in Debian, the more embedded ports, the hardware that you get available, that you get donated, isn't actually expected to be running 24-7 churning with all the cores and all the memory and all the disks. Um, we had quite horrendous heat problems with those with those new machines until um, Vince and and I spent quite a lot of time um, physically modifying the cases and putting bigger fans in. And I imagine you know a, a typical gamer PC. We did that kind of thing to the to these boards. You know, physical hardware mods to the cases to make them go go cooler. They work flawlessly. So thank you for your help with that, Vince. Um, we keep on having offers, or we keep on chasing offers of newer hardware and real servers. I'm told, I'm looking, but I'm not getting any, not getting much response. We did have offers of real ARM-based uh, servers, but it not quite happened yet. I'm hoping it'll happen soon. Yes. Very soon. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's actually less of a critical path now that we have better machines already, but still, real hardware, real servers that are designed to be managed and run 24-7 is better. So, moving on. ARM64 is the brand new port that went into Unstable exactly two weeks ago today. 
Um, I'm not going to claim most of the uh, credit for this. Wookie is sitting down for some reason instead of standing up and next to me. Well, come on. Um, Wookie has done, frankly, almost all of the legwork to get ARM64 to built in Debian ports. So, with all of the massive amounts of... <laughs> Um, the usual thing of bootstrapping and breaking all the loops and everything. He's been at this for 18 months, two years? Three years. Three years. Where you came from? Yeah, depending on how you count it. So I now get to do the easy bit of saying, right, well, when we're bootstrapping strapping ARM64 into the main archive, oh, we have a build loop. I'll just go and copy a package from the Debian ports archive, and then it, that, that works. He didn't have that option. He had to go through by hand and work out, so what do I do to bootstrap and break this loop? Steal and bits from Ubuntu. And steal bits from Ubuntu in, in cases. Two years ago. Yes. Um, so... We're now in the main archive. As of this morning, we, we were at just about 50% of the archive built. Uh, we've got um, plans to release with Jesse. I'm hoping the release team and all the other teams involved are happy with that. They, they assure me that they are. There are concerns, um, which are not wonderful, but to be honest, they're trusting us. We trust them. We're nice people, and they trust us to make it all happen. Um, we have two official buildies right now hosted at ARM, which are the ARM Juno uh, dev platform. Um, considering, again, these are dev boards, these are six core with eight gigs of memory, USB disks, because that's all they support at the moment. But, wow, they've been really, really stable and reliable and really, really quite fast, considering these are dev boards. Um, so we bootstrapped using just two machines from nothing to 50% of the archive in two weeks. That's not bad. You can see, oh, you probably can't see, apologies, this looked better on a small screen, it really does. Um, if you have a look at the two, almost, the two really, really sh um, steep lines on the right hand side of that graph, um, you'll see that there are ARM64 and PPC64EL. Um, we both went into the archive at about the same, t same time, a few hours Three apart days, or whatever. Um, we started first, the PPC64 guys came along with their massive server hardware and they overtook us. That's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's not a race. It, it's, well, it's not really. It's not a race. Well, it's not a race against each other. It's a race to get, frankly, enough of the archive built by the time that the freeze starts to happen in what about two weeks' time. <laughs> that we want to make sure we have enough in that people are happy. Colin, pass the mic. Why the tail off? The tail off is. I'll explain. Colin probably knows this already. But the tail off is basically the very first set of packages that you upload tend to be quite small library packages that don't have lots of dependencies. As you get further on, you'll see PPC64 is also tailing off, not quite as, as, as rapidly. So that's why as you get further up the dependency stack, you have things that A, mean you need to install a lot more build dependencies, so that takes time, and secondly, they're actually, they're the bigger packages. Although it's not clear to me why the, why, why the um, uh, things aren't the same shape, because they're both doing the same thing. It seems to me that although one machine's faster than the other, they should still have the same shape, and we don't, and this is On, on, on average, yeah. yes, they should be, they're, so they're not, not quite. Not. It's not a no. blockage. So both, both those machines, I, don't, I think, have, have been building solidly since they started. There's yes. no gap. So if you look at the Debian ports thing, there was some blockage and gaps and pauses yes. in that. And there's noticeable, you get to about 70% and then things really slow down because then you get onto really fat packages which take forever. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. The other reason is that when you have plenty of package builds, you have also more chance, more chance to have a package, a new upload of a new version of a package. Ah, of course. And so yes. you have to build it in addition to the bootstrap itself. Yes. Um, we did also, there was a slight screw up as we were bootstrapping. We didn't have current Perl. So we ended up, we unblocked a whole load of Perl packages and then had to do a Perl transition, which then meant about 200 more rebuilds. Um, they were only taking three or four minutes each on average, which is really nice on new fast hardware, but still, that's still 600 minutes of build time on these machines. Um, Neil? 
um, as we've been going through, we've been explicitly, there's a whole slew of us on Hash Debian Build D have been watching the needs build queue, the build dep on installable list and whatever, and making sure we keep on trying to get the needs build list as high as we can. So the last time I looked, it was like 1,200 packages. So we, what we obviously, the last thing we want to do is have machines going idle because there's nothing they can build when we're in a race. As I said, not against PPC 64EL in anything, but yeah, whatever. They've, they've got flashy hardware. The race is against the deadline for, for Jesse inclusion. I've been following a, a number of dependency chains, um, just trying to keep an eye on some of the leaf packages, some of the ones that I actually maintain, but equally they are at the top level of the dependency chain, so it's very easy to track which ones can't be built, which ones are uh, being blocked halfway along. Yeah. Um, the difference in the PPC 64EL line and the ARM64 line, I think, is actually because the PPC guys have chosen a different path through the, the dependency oh, um, a different set of things breakages, to fix the loops. and yeah. a lot of the packages that we've now built on ARM64 uh, and which are taking a lot of time on the Junos, They've still got haven't to yet do. been built ah, on PPC 64 as well. They've got a different path sure. through, and they're, um, and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're still doing smaller packages. So, so the two should converge eventually. Give or take, yes, of course. Uh, as we get up to like 80, 85 percent, we're going to be converging, guaranteed. Um, as Wookie will attest, and he's got a talk coming up this afternoon. I think next talk even. Bootstrapping is fun. Bootstrapping <laughs> is bloody hard and really tedious. It's harder than it should be. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and the thing, that, the things that you find, if you again join hash Debian build D, if in, or especially go and have a look at history if you can find it, and you see the stupid things that mean that typically documentation means that things all that depend on Doxygen or Tech Live or whatever, you end up with silly loops where GTK3 and QT4 end up stuck in the same loop. Yes. And, you end, uh, and you end up with packages that you just cannot understand how possibly they, they could ever make sense for them to be in the same build chain, but they are. So Tech Live needs GDB, another really cool <laughs> thing like that. Really? It's, yeah, it's hilarious. But anyway, ARM64 is really cool and it's coming. So talking of ARM64, Andy isn't here to here right now because I think he's trying not to die somewhere in his room. He, he got the DevCon for Lurgy and hopefully he won't die because he's a good friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to have to try and pretend to know how to do hardware. Um, <laughs> he was meant to be doing a talk later today about a project that several of us are wanting to get off the ground, which is developing a laptop using an ARM V8, an ARM64 um, system on chip. Um, the particular one we're looking at to start with for prototypes is basically a replacement motherboard to go in, I think, Pad X220. So you'll be able to use all of the nice bits that come with that machine, but with an ARM64 and lots of memory and whatever inside. That's a, that's a, a project. The actual talk has been moved from this evening because it clashes with somebody rather more famous who's turning up. Um, and I, I think people said Andy could still have his slot then. It's just that he, he wanted to actually have somebody to talk to. Um, so it's, I think it's meant to be happening tomorrow morning. I don't know exactly. You'll have to check, check the schedule. Um, I think, tomorrow at I think I heard tomorrow at 11 even, so right. it's worth checking in the schedule. Um, we also have for you today, we have some donated hardware. Um, Steve at the back, mm. I think, has a box full, a box with a few banana pie boards in. Um, they spoke to Martin Micklemeyer and Steve, and I'll let him explain a bit more. Right. Well, you've already covered the salient points. I have hardware, and it's yes. free. Um, we have a small number of dev boards that have been donated by, is it Remaker? The people uh, who make Lemaker, is that? Lemaker, well, Lemaker. Yes. so yeah, Martin Micklemeyer um, had these shipped to us for giveaways at, at uh, DevConf. Um, uh, so there's hardware if people are interested in, in bringing these boards up, uh, running Debian, interested in improving the, yes. the Debian port. You know, he was he's asking me if I want one. I'm saying I have all that free time that I might spend on it. If you think you'd be interested in, in having a piece of, of uh, ARM 
ARM v7. This uh, is v7. It's this will run ARM, ARM HF. Imagine it's like a Raspberry Pi, but a bit more advanced, and it will run ARM HF. Yeah, properly. it's like a Raspberry Pi, but with bananas, I guess. Exactly. These are it's, banana it, pie boards. Um, in it, the chip is the All Winner A20. Yeah. Um, it's an ARM v7 chip. Um, so we have these donated to give away. If you're interested, anyone, hands up. Come see me. It, it doesn't work with a Debian kernel yet. It probably won't be long, I hope. Yeah. Who, right. Who would like if, one? If you are interested, put your hands up and keep them up long enough for me to actually see you. Yeah. Okay. We have more than okay. enough people. To be honest, if you come and grab me at the end and we'll talk about it, obviously, the, we would love to give these out to the people who have the time and whatever to get these going and equally especially the people who can't just afford to go and buy one of these themselves just because so if you think you're a good, you're a good fit please talk to us um, the other thing that we that we have to talk about today um, is something that Pavel my colleague mom will tell us about right now there's been a poster up talking about this um, it's donated software I'll just use it in the old, old school way. Okay. Um, actually, the uh, the all winner A20. It's a nice little chip. It's got a dual core. Sorry. I'm trying to, but it doesn't work with the. Uh, it doesn't go well with the glasses. Maybe like this. Cool. So the uh, A20, the all winner A20 is actually a nice, neat little chip. It's got. Uh, it's a dual core A7. A7 is a probably my favorite uh, V7 core. Very uh, small and uh, and quite nifty as well. Anyway, there's something else uh, I wanted to talk to you about. So I work at uh, DSG, Development Solution Group, and uh, we are the part of ARM uh, charge with providing tools, development solutions, or if you wish. Uh, we do both commercial and open source uh, uh, tools. So we've got probably about 20 people working on GNU tools, both GC, Binutils, GDB as well. We've got 20 engineers working on LLVM, and we're still hiring, by the way. Hint. Uh, but the, uh, the topic of today is DS5 Development Studio. So it's a uh, commercial offering, normally. Um, it's a uh, integrated tool chain. It's a debugger and, sh and a profiler. You'll see it in a second. The important thing is it's, it works with both 32-bit uh, and 64-bit uh, targets, so both V7 and V8. And it's available now for free of charge for all Debian developers. And uh, yes, it's a proprietary software, so I'm sure that there will be people who won't touch it even with, even with a stick, and I respect it. Um, however, there are some people who, <laughs> who will use whatever it takes to get to the point, and uh, I know what's the background of this particular picture. I just wanted to recall this small, uh, uh, this small part of kernel development that happened in BitKeeper, and something good came out of it, right? And we know all the uh, uh, revision control systems actually got much better once this gentleman got started working with them. Anyway, so uh, I don't want to make this, this talk any more marketing than really necessary. So uh, the, uh, there are two main parts of DS5, the uh, debugger, which gives you pretty much everything you can expect from a debugger. It will connect to a standard GDB server uh, running on the target. This bit is even niftier, or rather nicer. It ticks all the marketing boxes. It's colorful, it's uh, simple to use, allegedly, etc., etc. Uh, I'll show you this live in a second. Uh, what to do in, to, in order to get hold of, the, uh, of this tool? Go to ds.arm.com slash Debian website. There will, be a, uh, there will be a small, there will be links to uh, downloads uh, with the installer of this product. I'll talk about the installer in, in more details in a second. In the orangey or browny box, there is a place for your uh, Debian developer login. And if you type it, you should see something along these lines. So there will be an acknowledgement of your request. And in some hopefully short time, you will get an email encrypted with your uh, GPG key uh, containing a 
serial number, a magic number, then you then type in a particular price in the, uh, in, the, in the product and it suddenly all works, unless, mark, or unless the licensing is broken again. So a quick uh, how-to. So the, the current uh, thing that you will find on the website is a uh, installer in a form of self-executable script. Um, it's not packaged in DP, DP, uh, dpackage um, DP yet. Uh, this has been on, on the uh, packaging for uh, both Ubuntu and Debian has been on files for, for ages. There's just not enough critical mass for, uh, for, uh, for us to actually convince validation people to start and build people to start building this, this kind of distribution. So the more the merrier, the more people are actually using it uh, from the Debian community, the, there's a greater chance for this to happen. Uh, no root is required. It will, uh, it will by default install in your home directory. Alternatively, you can, you can install it as a plugin to your existing uh, Eclipse installation. It's entirely up to you. Um, for the streamline, so for this colorful uh, thingy you've seen, uh, generally speaking, you want to uh, install a out of tree kernel, which is uh, shipped. It's all GPL'd. It's shipped with the product and a user space daemon as well. Uh, these days, actually, you can, uh, and I'll, you'll see it in a second, you can actually make it work without this, this out of tree kernel. So it's in the simplest possible scenario, it's just about copying one binary to the, uh, to the target, running it there. It's a daemon. Uh, exposing the CP socket and the streamline will connect to it. Now, I'm sure there will be issues. Um, all I can ask is to bear with us. It's a new experience for everyone. Um, let me just say that our product, product people, the business people for DS5, weren't entirely comfortable uh, with the idea of giving away money. And when I got a bunch of those serial numbers, I was told that uh, I just hold something like 100,000 bucks in, in serial numbers. Don't, 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 don't believe in all this stuff. It's for the good cause. Um, anyway, so if there are any issues, if you have any issues, whether with the uh, formal side of requesting licenses or with any pro with any issue with the product, feel free to uh, to uh, to join the um, uh, the um, tools group on uh, Armed com uh, Connected Community is a web forum, or contact me or any other of the uh, Arm guys around here. And uh, that's all for the slides. And if we still have a second, I will just connect to the target, which I've got here. It's a uh, It's a BeagleBone Black, wired up to my, uh, and it's obviously running Debian. Okay, and uh, what I'll do is I'll just uh, start capturing data. What you can see now is a, is a live view of uh, CPU usage, uh, some data from the, um, uh, from the um, performance monitoring unit. So for example, there is a, uh, there is a, um, uh, a chart showing the instructions being executed. So if I just quickly go to the target and uh, run some uh, meaningful load on the system, <laughs> that's my uh, favorite. <laughs> well, true. Semicolon. Semicolon, yes, in the wrong place, yep. Okay, we shall see more activity, <laughs> hopefully. And uh, once this is done, there are some other features. Um, so you can now see the, uh, in, at the bottom you can see the, uh, the processes and thread in the system. Obviously the color of those, of those slices means that the process is hotter or warmer, etc., etc. And uh, there is a flat profile if I've uh, included all the debug symbols for uh, for the running process, I will see some some uh, more detailed information about the uh, the uh, the code being executed. You will notice that there are only two tabs in this window. It's because I'm not a Debian developer, therefore I have no license for it. Therefore, uh, you will see more. Uh, having said that, I use uh, I use Debian from something like 1995, so I probably predate quite a quite a few of other dev uh, of real Debian developer these days. Anyway, so uh, that's all from me. Feel free to you know to catch me on or uh, question. So Debian has Eclipse built for ARM H HF and ARM64. Does this run natively on these platforms? Uh, Streamline will work. I've tested it myself. So Streamline will work. The debugger, I do not know. Ah, okay. uh, having said that, one of the reasons I've managed to convince our product people to actually do this is that uh, it is supposed to be uh, the first step in the direction of native tooling. So 
we are getting we are getting exactly where you were, what you've just mentioned. We are getting to a native tool, so self-hosted debug and uh, self-hosted profiling. Yes, as a streamline is tested. Uh, if the if the day was longer, slightly longer, 24 hours, the debugger would be on the list as well. Um, I have quite a few projects right now, and I'm actually now working on the on the uh, on the gators so of the streamlined agent packaging as well. Uh, more question, but I will move I will move away. As I say, feel free to uh, to catch me at any time later on. I'm around. Why do cables always go the wrong way around? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Are we there? Sorry, I will be with you in a moment. Yes, clearly. Oh, anyway, that's that. That was the main point. Point of that. Um, I'm basically done with the bits I wanted to say, and we do have some time. Clearly, this is meant to be a boff, so please let's talk about stuff. Dimitri. Hello. Um, I believe last year there were some talks about bringing Rasbian into the archive. What's the state of Rasbian? In my experience, the Raspbian guys, um, as with most projects, open source projects, they don't have a lot of spare time, so they seem to be very isolationist. They'll do what they need to do to get what's good for Raspberry, Raspberry Pi done, and then that's all they're interested in. So. so, yeah, so we talked about it after the thing, and uh, if we'd started there, they would have joined in, but as we hadn't, and now it's all working, they couldn't be bothered changing everything. Um, just to be part of Debian because it doesn't really change uh, anything about what's available to people. It would just be work. So um, I think it's reasonable to say they couldn't be bothered. Um, yeah, the one of the main guys behind Raspbian is a Debian developer, and he's super active with derivatives. I think perhaps I'm not sure, but yeah, and I'm like roughly involved in that. I idle and lurk in the IRC channel, um, but I think they'd be receptive. It's just I don't think we want another ARM architecture for like. V6 plus hard float when we have our AHF. So sure. Especially now we can get um, a selection of Pi alikes, which are in fact V7 boards. So um, you know uh, things things are moving along. Want to say something? I mean, it's already the point that you know we're adding ARM64 and we're taking flack from uh, DSA, the release team, and a number of folks. Don't you want? Not unreasonably, you say. Do you really need three different ports in the archive? The thought of doing a fourth or fifth or more. Yes. Let's not go there. You know, we, it's you know, it's diminishing returns. <laughs> we could potentially move, you know, move Armiel and Raspbian and and merge a bit. I mean, to be honest, if we moved Armiel four to V five, it's still not going to use the hard float stuff, which in theory should help at least a bit for Raspbian on the V six. Um, it, to be honest, it's a shame that the the particular GPU CPU combo in the Pi happened to be V six. If it was V seven, this would all be much easier. But hell, you know. Uh, uh, that's the Broadcom SOC they went with. <laughs> so what's the, what's the future of the ARMEL port? Uh, well, asking because, um, for example, for, for uh, full C++ compliance, um, mm. we need the Atomix helpers, uh, which are currently not available for ARMv4 and 5. <laughs> um, it's not an issue, I think, for Jesse, but uh, it might be an issue for, for Jesse. Sure. Plus one. I mean, the helpers are all there in the kernel. They're just not. Yeah. They're just not going to go very fast. I mean, that, that's the thing. Yes, the stuff that has come in for C plus plus eleven absolutely depends on features that on v four on v five just don't have. So you need to go into kernel. It means performance is going to suck. To be honest, if you're building well, a large C plus plus thing. No, I mean you have to swap, right? I mean. 
Yes, swap is dead in V6. Yeah. You but can, swap you works can, on V5. And it's you can, you can emulate all of this stuff. So I don't see why you, you, you cannot do that. Yeah. If it's sensible, it's a different question, of course. So, anyway, Ben, do you want to pass the mic over? Uh, if I understood rightly, the atomic helpers uh, provided by the kernel for old arm, uh, they run in they run in user mode, but the kernel knows exactly where they are and it mm. can do special things if they're preempted, and that's so then they're they're probably more expensive than the native atomic op operations yeah, exactly. of later uh, later arms, but sure. they're not that expensive. Yes, the helpers they're not sys calls they still hurt. It's nowhere near as fast as if there was real native support for these yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, it ca they can be made to work. I thought by now people already had them working. Um, it may just not, not have filtered through yet. Um, fine. I mean, again, it's m for, the, for the newer stuff that's using them, I guess we'll need, we'll need to work out how much effort it is to continue. For the people who would continue to want to run RML, say for their dream plugs or whatever, they may not care about, the, about newer stuff that's using this. We, we may possibly go down a limited set. We might move forward. Who knows? That's a, it's a discussion to have on the list. Well, yeah. but, but if, people don't if, if people don't care, but we need it in the archive to, for example, fulfill build dependencies, then mm. we don't have a complete port anymore. So maybe Armiel will be the first partial port? Maybe. Yeah, that, that would probably be sensible too. People are not going to be running, at least I assume, because I can't imagine how slow it would be. You're not going to be running Ice Weasel on a, on a Google plug or something, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? You're going to run app, and that's written in C++. <laughs> yes. If you say the ARM tools, the tools will no longer support V4 or V5 for the what for, with the use of these tools for non-Linux targets, uh, as across development environment? Because there's quite, still quite a lot of ARM, ARM 7, mm. 7s out there, and people still want to write code for them. Sure. With GCC, doesn't have to run full Debian, but some small articles or whatever. Mm. But they still want GCC, so I would be surprised if GCC will decide oh, to drop yeah, the GCC ARM 7 folks, support. <laughs> I can't imagine the GCC folks are about to drop ARM v4 support anytime soon. Like, you know, as Pavel said, we have a whole load of people working at ARM whose job it is to make sure that GCC works well on the old stuff and the new stuff. Um, you know, the IMX 28, which has been released... Uh, yeah, yeah. Mike. The uh, Freescale IMX 28, which has been released probably two years ago, is still based on ARM 9-6. Because it's small and it's cheap, so yeah, this this will you know this will carry, yeah. and the the tools will definitely, as in the compilers and the like, will not drop. Yeah, but the support for v sure. for V4T or even uh, before. But definitely for Debian purposes, moving forward, ARM HF and ARM64 are the things that we would expect most people are going to use. So, um, we're always looking for more help with porting, like all of the ports. Um, you know where to find us: hash Debian Arm or the Debian Arm mailing list. Um, another thing that I have mentioned on Debian Devel Announce, uh, in fact, this week, um, we, we're having a mini DebConf at, hosted by Arm in Cambridge um, in November this year. Um, there will obviously be quite a lot of people uh, who are interested in Arm and Arm related issues. That's not all that's going to happen. It will be a generic conference as well, so there will be a lot of other issues and a lot of other talks. Um, if you're interested, um, please go and have a look at the wiki and sign up, or ask me about it, and, I'll, and we can talk again later. Any more questions, comments? I could just say, in case people didn't know, we do have um, a bare metal cross toolchain in the archive since a few months ago, um, which, for all those tiddly arms, that ours isn't proper Linux, so it's relatively to help with your dev. Yeah. Um, Ah, so we do have the hardware giveaway still of those banana pies. Wookie has some hardware to give away as well, if he's remembered. <laughs> but he's not listening. Do I? Yes, you do. What? The stickers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I've, oh. I changed bags. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, I've got stickers. Yes, yeah. you may notice... There are some, like you know, Debian powered by ARM things, like uh, uh, like we have on our laptops. 
But you know, they're, hey, they're free stickers if you're interested. We'll be giving. We have some of those to give away. They were hope, meant to be here right now, but it seems they're not. Um, blame Wookie. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah. Um, basically, I've been putting some effort into getting uh, a few ArmHF boards that are moving towards working out of the box with Debian installer, getting Flash kernel support, making sure modules are enabled in the kernel. Cool. Um, it'd be really great to see a few boards that could just work out of the box, and I would Absolutely. love to talk with people who want to help with that. Yeah. I will see if I can get Jet and TK1 to work. Uh, we had another should work. another hand near, near the back. Yeah. And we're run rapidly running out of time, so. So, um, when you have the stickers, where will they be available? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put them on the front bench thing. Yeah. Thank you. I've been carrying them around all week and I forgot today. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. I've been um, quite busy. <laughs> so definitely, if, you, if you're interested in one of the banana pies, please come and talk to us straight at the end right now. Um, I think that's a good point to say. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, I'm working for Arnold seconded into Lenaro. So is Wookie. There is a huge amount of corporate stuff pushing on Debian work at the moment, um, and we're really quite happy about that. Yeah, they are doing quite a good job. We can't be too rude about them, really. Yes. Um, I mean, oh, in the legal department, obviously. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Wookie has basically been paid, and you know, it is, has been his day job to get the ARM64 port going as well, and that is really, really awesome. Lots and lots. I mean, the reason Pavel is here today, it's not just uh, that ARM, you know, want to get their want to get proprietary tools out to the community. The reason for this is a massive number of the day-to-day -day engineers inside ARM are really cool free software people. Love Debian, love Ubuntu, love all of the free software. Um, ecosystem and want to get involved. There are going to be hopefully several more of my co of our co-workers in ARM. There's at least two in our office who are wanting to get into the new maintainer process very soon. So um, we've got some really good engineers who we're want to We're slowly help. taking over. It's working quite well. Yes. Oh, we're to taking over inside ARM and they're trying to do a reverse takeover this way as well. It's cool. It's good fun. So thank you very much everybody.